Hi, Lisa. Welcome to TAPG Gallery. Can you tell us a little about yourself? My name is Lisa Wong. Uh, I'm a young Malaysian artist. I studied in the California College of the Arts with a BFA in illustration. Uh, I do mostly fine art, so my work spans from um, ornate, intricate, almost um, ink to, very in, ornate ink illustrations to abstract, colourful pieces. So I've done all sorts of styles of painting, but the main focus is always something that ties back to nature. How did you develop an interest in art? When I was very young, I've always, ever since I was young, I've always been drawing. And um, I come from a family where we've always had an interest in arts and literature. And, you know, we, we developed a habit of going to museums at an early age. We always, we, I, my older sister is a writer, my younger sister is a biochemist. So we've always kind of had an interest in, we read things from the encyclopedia. We, talk to our parents about Monet and Cezanne and it was always something that we've had an interest in. So all of us, all of us siblings have had an interest in art. And I think it was very natural for me to progress into art. It was always something that was very innate. And I have, ever since I was young, I could never focus in school. So I was always drawing in my textbooks. And I think I got more wrong answers than right, but more, mostly my textbooks were just filled with drawings more than anything else. Probably not good schoolwork, but drawings. How would you describe your creative work? So my creative work spans from, like I said, from only illustrations to abstract pieces, but they're always very nature focused. So there's always kind of a, an homage to the greenery that I've kind of grown up around. So I'm from Kuala Lumpur and I feel that um, you know, nature is always all around us. So even when we're on the highways, you will pass by patches of green. Uh, I have a, I, I stay with my um, parents and we have a really, really nice garden. So there's always just kind of like this, this, it's almost like, I'm almost swallowed by, in a sense, like just the amount of like foliage. And it's just very natural for me to gravitate towards it. And in a sense, my artwork comes from a place where I'm committing these like shapes and forms to memory and I'm placing them on the canvas. So it's almost like journaling like what I see. It's almost like, okay, I see this, wow, that, that, that's, that's a beautiful shade of hot pink on that leaf. Like, how did that come to be in the natural form? And I, I just want to com commit it to the canvas. Like, I want to translate it down. Like, you know, I want to commit it to memory. So a lot of my work just comes from, just, it's almost like a form of journaling really. How do you get your ideas and what inspires you? So for my latest series, um, it's called Nighttime Spells and it was inspired by the walks. I, I, I have a small dog so I take her out for walks at night and there's always this kind of really, it's, it's very, it's like, it's a, almost like a sensory overload. You have the sound of cicadas, crickets chirping, uh, you have the scent of jasmine, you see a bat swooping down. It's very surreal and very magical. So sometimes I draw my inspiration from that. It's just that kind of daily activity that just, and you, you draw so much inspiration from it. It's, it's almost like that time, that, that little five, five to ten minutes I take my dog out, there's, I'm in, like, I, I'm in another world. It's, it's kind of like I've escaped the physical realm and kind of entered this magical, yeah, magical, it's almost like magic realism, really. It's a different realm altogether. Something that doesn't quite exist on our plane. Alright. What are some of the challenges that you have to overcome? Ah, oh, wow. There's a lot of challenges I've had to overcome. So, sometimes it's, for me, the inability to translate a feeling or a thought I have on the canvas. I tend to be a very spontaneous person, so I tend to just kind of just put everything down but sometimes you can't really form the images it's like you can't form the words in your head whereas on the canvas you can't form the images and sometimes it's just you know I think all artists share in a saboteur and you know we always tell ourselves oh we can't do this or you know there are people who can do these things better than you so a lot of the times it's just kind of fighting with myself and wrestling with myself and you get like you know just like you know, but I think the most important thing to just kind of battle these 
in the thoughts is to just press on and you just really have to just go for it there's like nothing you can do you can kind of be like you can argue with yourself but you know frankly it's wasting time to just do that you just have to keep on pushing until you get through and for me like that's what has helped me get through a lot of these challenges what is your next project what are you working on now so my next project is still part of the night magic series but uh, as you can see some of these are my earlier works and um, they're very I would say um, there, there's a lot of kind of like draw there's a draw from like Chinese orientalist art chinoiserie so I'm kind of combining the two um, night magic which I don't have here is a more abstracted series so I'm just kind of combining the two and, and creating if you can say an art baby from it so I think uh, you haven't, I haven't shown any pieces from that yet, but I'm currently working on it, so look forward to it. What are the lessons that you can share with others? Um, for me, one of the greatest lessons is having a really good relationship with an art gallery. So, and I think like just like for me, like, you know, getting to know people behind, you know, your art, like who are helping you support your art and just, you know, learning to like, I guess, communicate about your art is very very important it just it's it's all about relationships really that's what I've learned how do you feel like going international it's a very daunting thought it's daunting but at the same time I think it's really exciting um, I personally would love to reach a global platform and uh, I hope that it gets there I hope that you know uh, I have exhibitions as far as the states I've so far I think the furthest I've gone is Spain and Paris, uh, but so far I would, uh, it's just Europe. I would like to reach a global scale, so hoping to reach uh, North America. I got to know Lisa Wong from a friend. She, she was in the Masterpiece auction with some of her, her work. She asked the manager in auction house, who is the, who can you recommend it? art gallery that can present her. She wants a good, established gallery. And the manager, Sharon Lok, invited her and the parent to my gallery. And we had a discussion, and that was the first time I met Lisa Wong and the parent. One, I realized that both parents are hardcore about art. They love art, they've been collecting art even when she was very young. So, I was telling myself I'm dealing with the right person who really knows how to appreciate art. And I'm very, also very happy at least the children start to enjoy art and also ended up as an artist. And uh, at that time, four years ago in 2016, Lisa Wong was still very young then. And I was telling myself I have no any young artists in my gallery. And I like to help all those emerging artists. I see a potential in her. I saw her art, I said, it is a certain market for young people because young people are very dynamic, they're very creative and I saw some creativity in her art. So I got her in and at that time we had the first art group show in my gallery. That was actually the launching of my gallery in the year 2015. We have 80 artists participating, 160 paintings and he was one of them. And uh, we have uh, a lot of people coming in. At that time, I remember I have five or six icon artists, senior established artists, even at the exhibition. So at the exhibition, we get to know each other very well. And later on, I proposed to her, why don't you do another group show? We do another group show. And this is how she got involved in the group show and he sold her painting. That gave me the confidence and he was also confident that her work sell. Then we make a proposal that why do we do a solo for her? And uh, this is how we had a solo and we sold a few pieces. Then we also got an art talk. Some student came in from other university and she was one of the speakers. And I, want, I needed her to explain to her, to the young people about art. This way I think it was a good education for, me, for the uh, university student and also for her. Then later on, I asked her, would you like to go international? And she said, yes. And that's where I had an ex group exhibition in Hong Kong where my daughter Joy looked after the place and we have the group show in Hong Kong. Later on, we had the another art exhibition in Hong Kong 
in the Hong Kong Convention Center, the affordable art. And he too sold a few pieces. And then again, I was encouraged, both of us were encouraged that I'm very happy that I, I see a potential emerging artist. Then they thought we had, uh, I organized, we, we participated in Matrix show, Ex Art Expo in Malaysia in the year 2018 and 2019. And true enough, in both occasions, her painting are sold. So this is where I believe that he has a potential. This has been proven not only by me, but the market in general. People can accept her painting. So congratulations. Yeah, thank, uh, you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lisa, uh, now that you've won international, what are your, what are your thoughts? Um, I definitely think that the international market is extremely different from the Malaysian market. Uh, the things that are consumed over there are very, very different in terms of aesthetics and visuals, but also in terms of kind of the dialogue between the other, the artists themselves and the viewer. So I, I think that definitely I want to help to take Malaysian contemporary art on the global scale, uh, but I also want to be distinctly Malaysian. I also don't want to be saying like, okay, well, let's just try and westernize this as much as possible. I want to stay true to myself and kind of try and communicate that while also representing Malaysians to the world. What can you do more for TAPG? So what I want to do for TAPG is I want to help to represent them as a gallery that is not just a Malaysian gallery, but an international gallery for both Malaysia, Hong Kong, not just Malaysia and Hong Kong, Asia, Greater Asia, Europe, probably, hopefully the US. We recently did um, a virtual art fair, at the Hamptons uh, virtual art fair based in the States. And um, I think that it looked really, really good. In uh, Yeah, the preview looked really, really good. So I'm hoping that that signals a brighter future for all of us together. Thank you very much, Lisa and Mr. Thank, thank you for this segment. I'm an artist, I talk art. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.